Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to G Bears Off Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. September uh, 9th, 2019. And uh, here we are in the uh, battery room. I did switch out all of the other controllers, and I am running just now on these two cheapo MPPTs. And uh, you notice that I'm up in the 13 range on these. Well, I've got half of my solar on one and half of the solar on the other. So I've got 1,385 watts of solar out there that's uh, pumping into that half and one half and the other. And this is late in the day. This is dinner time. Normally, I'm down in the low 12, not low 12s, mid 12s at this point. But uh, I'm way up in the 13s yet still. So those things are working. Whatever you want to say about them, they are working. Um, this is still only the early testing on them, so don't run out and buy these things right away just because you see them working here. Let's see how long they go, they go and see what they're doing. I took out those other two up there. That's a an MPPT, or claim it is, but it's a hybrid. And that's a hybrid there. And I'm not sure if that's an MPPT or a PWM. Um, it never said on any of the uh, software or the... Uh, paperwork that came with it or anything like that which one it was I just assumed it was an MPPT because they're basically identical <laughs> yeah. well don't assume it makes an ass out of you and me right all right anyway I've got some of this cleaned up here and uh, it's down to uh, the minimums now so, so there's not really a lot going on in the wiring there's going to be more cleaned up on this I did split these uh, units, so I got uh, panels A are going on the two higher connectors, panels B are going on two lower connectors. So the only thing that's not going through that right now are those 100 watts of um, Harbor Freight solar panels out there. Those are coming in through this controller, and I'm still getting 13.7, 13.8 with a charge going into the batteries on that. and. Uh, that's not going into my battery bank. What I originally had it hooked up to was the two Harbor Freight 35 amp hour batteries that I bought, even though they're brand new. I wanted to put them on a charge and keep them running to see how they, they accepted the Harbor Freight system. And they were doing just fine. And those things were peaked out. As a matter of fact, um, that went to dump uh, yesterday and probably did again today if I had had hooked up to those. But I switched it over to that stowaway battery, which is the battery that came out of that tent camper out there. And uh, I did treat it with uh, Epsom salts, and I'm just gonna see if I can get a charge in it, and see if it's gonna hold a charge, and if it's gonna be able to accept the load. So I've got the, the two clips on there coming off of that um, Harbor Freight solar charger. It's going on to that battery right now, and it's showing at 13.8. So, who knows? We'll see how that comes up, and then I'll get my uh, my load charger uh, or my load tester out here, and I'll put my load tester on that battery and see if it holds a load. If it does, well, I got a battery I can use, and I'm going to need that because the motorhome over there, I, I not only did I have a problem with moths getting into it, but the little birds, the little chickadees that are out here. Last year, they went in through the grill right between the F and the O on Ford, and uh, they built a nest on top of the main battery. Well, the main battery had jumpers coming off of it, going to the solenoids that normally don't um, send power to the house batteries, except when the engine's running when you're driving. So it was set up so that when I would drive, I would charge all the batteries, and then when I parked and camped for the night, the, uh, the they would separate the main uh, battery, the engine battery, from the house two house batteries. So if I fell asleep with the TV on or something like that, I wouldn't have to worry about cranking it up and getting out of here. But I do have old Harbor Freight panels on the roof of that motorhome, and there's... Uh, uh, two 45 watt sets up there for 90 watts total that usually keep all those batteries charged well that when they the birds built that nest on top of the battery they shorted it out 
and because it was tied with jumpers, uh, jumping the solenoids so that the house batteries would stay charged too, they shorted all three batteries. <sighs> well, if this experiment down here works, then I'll pull those batteries out and I'll do the same thing to them. Um, this is something I saw on somebody else's YouTube. I can't remember whose it was uh, a few years back. And I just said, one of these days when I've got an old battery that I don't care about, I'll try that and see how it works. So that's what I'm doing with it. So ho hopefully it works and I'll uh, be able to do that one. All right. Now, remember, don't go out and run out and buy those, uh, those MPPT uh, solar chargers right away because they're still in the testing stage and uh, the sun is starting to set now we're down to 13.1 which is way above what i need it's a 12.6 is uh full batteries so my battery bank is fully charged right now and there's no worry about that and there's really nothing coming in on the uh solar i mean on the wind but uh we'll see if the winds pick up like they normally do at night and we'll go from there all right Let's move on out of here. So what have I been doing all day? Well, it's been cleanup um, time because, you know, the winder, I say winder with a D, not T, because that's the winds have been coming up, and that's what we get out here in the winter is wind and uh, rain and snow and ice and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, coming over here, I, I, actually what I've been doing is I've been cleaning out the van. And I got a table here set up with a bunch of stuff on it because I'm going to come back out after dinner and it'll be a little cooler without the sun beating on the back of it and I'll be able to do some more work and I'll get some of this stuff put away. But uh, I had all those hammers in here. You know, even if I wanted to work with two hands, I couldn't use all of those hammers. So I know each one is for a different thing. Well... I don't need all those hammers in my van. So I took everything out of there and I got uh, uh, 12 different size uh, plumbing pipe wrenches that were in there. Well, just what was on this table alone raised that back end up four inches when I took it out of there. It's amazing. This van is sitting on a rake right now because of the no weight in the back. It's just, just totally amazing. So I want getting it cleaned out because I was asked by somebody about uh, the solar in my van. And yep, those are solar panels up there. And that's the old Harbor Freight uh, 45 watt system. They've been up there for a long time. There's only 45 watts up there, three 15 amp uh, or three 15 watt panels. They're small panels. They are amorphous, but uh, they're small. And I, I got a rack from Pet Boys, and I modified it with some uh, angle aluminums on the top, and I used self-drilling screws to screw it down into the rack itself. And then I could fasten the, with self-drilling screws, I could fasten the panels in, go from the ends. And I used uh, uh, hex head nuts, uh, not regular Phillips screws, so they weren't going to be easy to take apart. But then the wires come out through the rack right there, and I drilled a hole into the van, and I put them through there. Now, that, that is sealed between the outside and the inside, so I don't get water running inside the van. But uh, that was how I went inside. And people go, oh, you drilled a hole in your van? You know what? Every police car out there that has lights on top of it and sirens and all that kind of stuff has holes drilled in it. And when they're all done with them, they send them into the body shop, and the bodies guys patch those little holes. It's minor uh, body work. It's really easy to do. So no big deal, uh, but I, I do have solar around here. And then I have an old Harbor Freight 3,000-watt inverter in here. And this is it right there. And that's the old uh, controllers, okay? Well, right now, all I have is one yellow top battery in here. It's an AGM. And uh, I've got 120 volts in here. Now, when I first started out here, if you've watched some of my old videos, when I was building the pedestal for my um, water tank and that stuff and um, working on the uh, cabin, 
I didn't have the electric room there and I didn't have the solar set up and all of that. I was running everything off of this van. I was running my table saw and my chop mita saws off of this system right here in the van with 45 watts of solar panels on the top. But I, at the time I had three deep cycle batteries in here that I was working off of. Okay, so now remember, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Don't get confused. When you're running solar, you're, you're not running your equipment off of the solar panels. You're running your equipment off of the batteries. Uh, granted, during the day when the sun is shining, if you have enough solar panels to override what um, the wattages of the items that you're using, like if you're running a 12 amp saw at 120 volts, that's uh, 1440 watts. Okay, so, so you've got to have that much going back in to be able to keep running it constantly. Now, when I was running the saws, they didn't run eight hours a day. They probably ran two hours a day because I would cut pieces and then go assemble them and put them in place and come back and cut a few pieces and so forth and so on. So in between all my cuts, I was letting the batteries recoup. So I hope that's uh, uh, something you can understand. And uh, that's all there is to it. All right. I also got the um, shelf braces up there on that side. As, uh, I got to get my 2x12s on there now. And then I can also put my shelves across right above the door where I'm going to be putting my uh, grab-and-go stuff. Uh, my uh, BO box, a BOB, the bug-out box. You know, things like that I'll have ready to go if I need to grab it in a hurry and, and get going. So that's where we stand. I brought a bunch of junk in here to get it out of the winds because I got tired of running down the driveway and chasing it all. And uh, I've got it all tucked away out of the wind right now. So I'm going to go in, grab myself a cold one. I'm going to cook uh, shrimp scampi tonight for dinner uh, with uh, some cheesy toast. And uh, sit back and relax, have a couple of cold glasses of wine. And then come back out here and get some work done. G-Bear reminding you, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to download if you want to download this. Don't forget to save it if you want to save it. Don't forget to share it. You got to share it with other people, you know. You know your, your best friend from high school really wants to hear from you. So call them up and say, hey, check out G-Bear's uh, off-grid ways in, uh, on YouTube. All right, everybody. G-Bear, signing off.